Hey, you're just in time. We're going over to Mike Westmore's house. We're going to visit a Hollywood legend, and you're going to be there. So come on, let's go. Yeah. See? Here's Mike's collection of action figures. Most people collect G.I. Joes and uh, stuff like that. But uh, Mike oh, is... Look. Hi. <laughs> There's the guy who collects the action figures. And not only has he collected an action figure, all his action figures, but he's also collected a star on this the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This one. Now, as, as the ceremony was going on, uh, right where the podium was set, somebody decided to water their plants. I mean, I, I had my notes and they were all on ink. <laughs> I had to step back under a building because if they got wet, I would have been mad. Right, right. <laughs> Star Trek is great and everything yeah. I love Star Trek. But what really is fascinating to me, and, uh, and because of it, when I came to work for you on Star Trek, it was like a double you know, winning the lottery because I wasn't just working on Star Trek, I was working with the Westmore. Yeah. And the Westmores, that's a Westmore over there. It's, don't look at me, look at him. That's a Westmore. These guys invented a Hollywood makeup. Invented it. There was a time when there was a Westmore as the head of the makeup department of every major studio. Every major except MGM. Now, Purse was practically the head of Warner Brothers. I had a lifetime contract with, with Warner that only he could break. They couldn't fire him. They couldn't fire him. The only way he could get out of it was to quit. Amazing. He could, he could himself could quit. Now, so, he, but he used to do that. I was gonna to, say. To get a raise, if he, when he wanted more money, he would threaten to quit and then give him a raise. It finally got down to the point where I guess Warner wasn't there and somebody else had kind of like taken over the reins and first went in and quit. And they said, put that in writing. So first oh, put it in writing that was and it. they accepted it. You started with your Uncle Bud yes. at Universal. Yeah. Was The Monsters your first show, or did you start on something else? First show that I had worked on was a movie called Flower Drum Song. As, as the first project as an apprentice, and I got to make up extras in the book. Kind of doing things for all of them, ordering lipstick for Doris Day, uh, bringing Sandra D coffee, talking with Rock Hudson, chasing all the secretaries. <laughs> it, um, hey, you were kind of a playboy, weren't right? you? You know, it was very <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I know I always ask you to tell this, but it's how you met Marion. Yeah. Marion was a model for Edith Head? Yes. Yeah. Edith Head. Yeah. She closed the show wearing a wedding dress that Rosemary Forsyth wore in the movie Shenandoah. I was sitting in the makeup chair behind the, the curtain reading the newspaper. And the, the, the show ended and the curtains opened up and we were literally about five foot from each other. I mean really close. And instead of like putting the paper up or totally ignoring her, she had a wedding dress on. And I said, hey, you want to get married? <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. And so she says, well, let me change and we can talk about it. And she, nice. she went and she changed her clothes. And she came back and it's the first time that we ever talked. This is an old poster here that uh, found in a prop room at Paramount Studio, not Paramount, at Warner Wow. Brothers. I was at Paramount and got a phone call from a man that said, I'm cleaning out the uh, prop room and I found this poster and I don't know if you'd like it or not. You know, Holy cow, sure. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey you guys, this is actually a uh, print of a painting that was done by uh, Norman Rockwell. A cover of uh, 1938, 1938 Post Magazine. We know that's Gary Cooper. But who is the makeup artist? Do not know who the makeup artist is. Mystery makeup artist. But if you're a makeup artist, that painting is one of your favorites. There's an actual pair of Rocky gloves? Yeah. Wow. Cool. Sometime I'm going to ask you to knock me out with those. This is one of my prized possessions. That uh, when, when oh. Kurt died, we had to go back <laughs> and climb this mountain to kill him again because he wouldn't die the first time. He kept grabbing the guy's leg. I mean, here he's had his chest blown out, and he's, he won't die. In fact, Malcolm McDowell looked at him one time and said, Die, damn it, die, as he's hanging on his leg. So for another million dollars, I guess, we went back to the desert to, uh, to kill Kirk. And uh, since it's a national park, all of these rocks had to be returned to the valley floor. So, of course, all the prop people just picked them up and started tossing them over the top. So I'm the only one that, <laughs> in existence that actually has, and of course it's from the National Park, which I'm telling everybody I still live from the National Park. Uh, 
<laughs> with, with one of the rocks that was actually on the top of the grave. Hey, Mike, to wrap it up, you want to sing any Phantom of the Opera for... Uh... Da, 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 da. <laughs> you need to go to my daughter for that. <laughs>